And welcome back to the channel, everybody. And welcome back to a new video. And today's video is by request. I've gotten so many messages ever since Dodge announced the new Mopar edition scat packs that will be numbered and have stickers on them. And because I talked so much trash in the past about sticker cars, you want to know what I think. Actually, it's not because I talked trash in the past. It's because I bought one. But some of you have asked me, what do you mean by stickers? You call it a sticker car. What does that mean? Well, let me explain here on my new 2023 Swinger with limo tinted windows that I just had done. So the car's filthy because I haven't washed it yet. But that is a sticker. That is a sticker. It is not paint. That is a sticker. They stuck a sticker on a scat pack in sublime green, which is the color I wanted, and changed the badges just a little bit, like so. And there's a little bit of difference in the interior, which wouldn't necessarily be considered stickers, but the green stitching and the hash marks for the RT in the seats and a little bit different kind of texture on this, uh, this dash stuff here and a badge over there that says Swinger. So that is the sticker car. Now I'm gonna pop the hood because a lot of you want to know or at least wanted to see inside this hood here and it's a normal Mopar 6.4 liter V8 naturally aspirated with the shaker hood, which is awesome, and with the last call badge, which I'll peel that off, just like I took the yellow thing off. That blue will come off at some point, just not yet. And I do love that it says shaker right there. This is an awesome car. But yes, folks, it's a sticker car. And yes, I talk trash about the sticker cars. And yes, Dodge just announced the Mopar edition sticker car, but it'll be numbered and I'm sure you wanna know what I think about that. So I'm gonna share with you so that you can give me crap in the comments section. But I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out why I bought a sticker car. Because after all the trash I talked, why did I buy a sticker car? Well, I shared a little bit of this in my last video, but I'll double down and make sure it's absolutely crystal clear because no matter what I say, I still catch hell in the comments section for doing this. So let me explain while we're looking at the car before we jump into it and sit and have a conversation. So, I said when I was at SEMA, go back and watch that video, when I was standing in front of this exact car, that if this car came out with a manual, with Sublime Green, which is an awesome color that has been gone for years, I wouldn't care about the sticker, I wouldn't care about it being a special edition, I wouldn't care about any of that. The spec in a six-speed manual, which this guy is, see that? And the shaker hood, which if you watch my other videos when I bought that last shaker, I love that shaker hood. I love watching that thing wiggle around in the, in the hood. I would buy it. I would buy it regardless of whether it had a swinger sticker on it or not. And then we've got the swinger and sublime. Now this is the car I would take. I don't care about the swinger badges and stickers, but I love that it's a shaker. I, I love the look, the color, everything about this thing. This is incredible. So, if I get my hands on a special edition, I would definitely get the Sublime Green Swinger. But Brad, you paid like three or four thousand dollars more, whatever it is, for the Swinger package. Yeah, I did. And that's where I'll explain why this new Mopar edition has any legs at all, even though I don't necessarily agree with it, and I don't think this car is worth any more than any other car, but if I wanted a Sublime Green with those wheels, which by the way, I wanted black, I think black probably looks better, but this is unique because those wheels match those badges, which matches that hood scoop, and that makes this car very unique and special and doesn't look like every other car out there on the road. But there's not that many Sublime Greens. But I got the spec I wanted. Shaker, six speed, Sublime Green, beautiful wheels, black calipers. This is the car I wanted. The very nice interior. I'm good with this. The fact that it has a sticker on it, completely incidental. And let's just consider it a slight bonus because of my resale value might be a little bit more because some of you are gonna be willing to pay more for this down the road. And some of you already have paid way more than I paid for yours, which puts me in good a good place financially on this car. 
So now let's jump inside the car. And one thing, little uh, little note that some of you may not realize, I did notice when I bought the car, you cannot do a cold start <laughs> on, well, you can't do a remote start on a manual car for obvious reasons. You wouldn't want to start it in gear and launch it forward into my daughter's Supra and pay her back for crashing my Lamborghini. So that's where that is. Plus the Dodge badges are black on the back. So just little things that they did. The Scat Pack emblem on the back, but that's this, uh, this guy right here. So let's jump in, talk about this Mopar edition. All right, so you've got the white speedometer and tachometer here. Let's go ahead and crank these lights on. Well, I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can see it good looks really cool so that is the swinger now let's talk about this mopar edition car and these sticker cars overall all right so what's the deal with the mopar edition well let's just talk about the car real quick it's going to be a black charger and a black challenger there's going to be 440 of these things made 200 in the charger 200 in the challenger both wide bodies and another 40 for Canada. I'm sure they'll mix those up by 50-50 of each version as well. And yes, they're gonna be numbered. Now, I've always said in the past that a numbered car tends to hold more value because certainly having the first one of those makes that car worth more. And along the way, if you end up having matching numbers of other cars. Let's say you have a Demon and it's number 10, and you have number 10 of this unique car. Then certainly that might make it more desirable as well, where somebody would pay a little bit more money. So the numbering was a good idea, but if I could say this without getting in trouble with, with uh, Tim Kaniscus and his brethren with Stellantis, I think this was an afterthought. I think they maybe had a bunch of blue vinyl left over, and I think they had some matte vinyl left over, and I don't know, they decided, let's add one in. Because why would they tell us there's gonna be seven special editions, and then boom, come out and say, just kidding, we're gonna do number eight. So anybody who says they lied to us, I don't buy that. Dodge and Stellantis, mainly Dodge, we can pretty much bank on them changing their minds constantly. With the Durango, with the Red Eyes and the Demons, they're gonna bring different variants, super stocks, they're gonna change gears on us constantly, which we shouldn't ever be surprised about that. The fact that they're adding in another special edition, just par for the course, so I'm not even mad at them. It's just another cool car that we all get to buy. But I will tell you, and I will say this as clear as day, if you go pay a markup on this thing, you deserve what you get because just because it's numbered does not mean that it's very special. The number definitely makes us think that it is. But I'm thinking if this was an afterthought, somebody up there in Stellantis said, you know what? We can't roll out another special edition car and not number it. Because at this point, we're just getting rid of vinyl. And that's what it's gonna look like. We're just trying to dump vinyl, empty the parts stores. Maybe we didn't sell enough scat packs because the whole world lined up to buy red eyes with this last call car this year. And we need to just get rid of some more scat packs. And if we let these get ordered, maybe we'll get one more run on the bank to get all these orders in, because they're gonna let you order these cars in a spec you want, Challenger with a manual or with an automatic. So that's kind of cool. But that will at least let them gauge how many of these cars can get built. But the, the danger is that they say they're going to number them and they don't sell enough of them. But how they protected themselves there is they made 440, which means they can completely screw up or even just build standing inventory, send them number to the dealership, and the dealerships will probably be able to milk some of you out of huge markups because they've got a numbered car and they can say how special it is. And I'll tell you, right now, the dealerships are not able to sell these cars like they were able to do it. I'm getting message after message. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna share these with you in another video when I talk about what I paid for this thing, which I'll tell you straight up, I did not pay a markup, I did not pay add-ons. So you do the math. I also do not wanna blast the dealership that did me a solid and did me right on this thing. With that said, I'll tell you, every dealership is having trouble moving cars right now. Go and look on a website 
mark your calendar that this car is, let's say it's a scat pack, or let's just say it's a, one of the special edition cars, is on the website. Let's say it's, you know, Dodge of uh, Buena Park or something like that. And you take the VIN number down and go back every week until that thing disappears. And you will be shocked that you will be two, three months, four months down the road and that car is still sitting there. And you'll call them and they'll say, yes, it's marked up. Uh, I want 15 grand over or come in and talk to me about it and you're gonna go I'm not paying anything over and you're thinking they're gonna go well then please don't hang up please come in here no they're gonna let you go because they know they can flip the switch sell the car for sticker if they want to they don't need to sell it to you over the phone when they get 20 of those calls a day but if you drive your lazy asses and I mean this lovingly to the dealership with your pre-approved loan or your cash and your checkbook ready to go, and you walk in there and you say, let me drive that car, I might be interested in buying it. You take it for a drive, and when you get back you say, I like it, I'd take it, but I'd take it at this price. Tell them what you're willing to pay, and then if they won't do it, sashay. This step is called a chassis. Weight's on the left, and we're gonna head off to the right side. We step the right foot to the side, step the left together, step the right to the side. Do it sideways, do the crab walk. Let's go ahead and begin. Keep your core up and walk your right hand and your left foot forward. Repeat with your other limbs. Or full on moonwalk. Slowly but confidently back to your car. Give them every chance. Do a couple pirouettes. And today, I'll be showing you how to pirouette. Maybe a somersault or two. Get rolling by learning this easy to learn and fun trick. And then they will stop you, tackle you to the ground. And <laughs> say, would you take it if I did it? Today, you go, I told you I would. I got my money right here. And then tell them, and don't play any you know, fancy footwork on me and stick, you know, some 5,000 or 10 windows on there or some Silajet crap or some GPS thing I don't need. Don't do that. I want the car at the sticker or even less than sticker. You make your deal. Don't pay attention to what is listed on the websites or what the people say on the phone. All of a sudden, so many of you think that these car salespeople are all the most honorable, honest people in the world. What they put on the website is what they want for the car. What they tell you on the phone is what they want for the car because they're the most honorable, honorable people in the world. Most of them are friggin' liars. Terrific, that's what we're here for. Stand here, you can look, browse, peek, touch, feel, taste, smell, do anything you want, take all the time you want. Nobody's gonna pressure anybody around here, Stan. And the bottom line is, whatever it says on the website, whatever they tell you on the phone, it changes when you are sitting in front of them with your money in your hand. So I'm begging you all to listen to me when I say this. Same thing with these Mo last Mopar edition cars. Don't get sucked in. They're having trouble moving cars. What's a great way to start moving a bunch of scat packs is go ahead and make one more special edition, make it numbered, and make it orderable. And then, boom, they can knock out the last couple hundred cars, considering that I'm hearing they're going to stop production of these cars at the end of July, so in another week or so. But if you order one, order it. St just stay firm. Order it with a commitment that you're gonna get it for MSRP. At the very most that you're gonna get it for MSRP. Because I'll tell you right now, special editions, I got two more messages today where people are buying special editions. Another guy just sent me a uh, an F8 green one. He got four MSRP. So I'm telling you, when special editions are going for MSRP, that's a shift in the marketplace. When you see five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these cars on a dealership lot and you start tracking how long they're there rather than getting caught up in the excitement and then you go in there and you, you you say look I've been I've been watching this thing for you know four months now you haven't sold it yet why are you holding so firm clearly no one's willing to pay that price and then make an offer and I'll tell you when I just talk trash about all these car sales people I love Max Max is amazing Max sold me my car Max is selling lots of cars Max some of you I two subscribers one bought the ghost one bought the Durango already and I think that's awesome and I believe 
they got a good deal. Now, as much as I love Max, I think Max is a great guy. Max is also a smart guy, so he knows how long these cars are sitting around, and he knows what he needs to do to move them. So if you go in there and you wrestle with him, a sale's gonna be made. You're either gonna sell him, or he's gonna sell you. It depends on who wants the deal the most. So you gotta go in there and fight your fight and get your best deal, and not come on the comment section and wail on me that I bought a sticker car when I talk trash. Back to the sticker cars, I believe wholeheartedly, as much as every bone in my body wants to say that it's not gonna be true at all, that this market is so incredibly propped up by the enthusiasts, by the purists, by the Mopar lovers, by people like me who love these cars and are frankly pissed that they're going away, that the sticker cars, these special edition cars, will certainly have more value to them, meaning the stickers on the back of this car and the interior makes it unique, but doesn't make it worth you know, 10, 15, 20,000 more. But what I do think it does is it makes it more desirable in comparison to other scat packs that aren't special editions. Fair enough, but I'll tell you folks, the market's changing. There's deals to be had out there. Don't run to the dealerships and put deposits on these things that are non-refundable. If anything, if you have to lock one down because you gotta have it, make sure your deposit is clearly stated in the contract that it's refundable. If they won't give you MSRP and you wanna commit to a markup, commit to the smallest markup you can, and then hold firm on the refundable deposit, and then when that car, when the cars start to show up, start looking for standing inventory where people backed out, didn't buy their cars, and try to buy one at MSRP, or go into the dealership, back out, ask for your deposit back, let it sit there for a week or two, and if it doesn't sell, call them back. Play the game, don't be desperate for the car. Believe me, I wasn't desperate this, for this thing. I wasn't even thinking about buying this thing. The fact that it came up and I got it for, the deal I got it for, and it puts me dead center where I wanted to be. So with that, everybody, that's the story. You can go look up the Mopar Edition. It's all over the internet. Car and driver, Dodge Garage, everything else. Looks like a beautiful car. It looks like a black scat pack with some stickers on it. No question, it's gonna be special because it's numbered, but don't lose your minds and go out there and commit to some massive prices. Stay vigilant, stay patient, negotiate, even negotiate with Max. Look, I love the guy, but I wanna end with this thing. I got a few of you giving me crap saying, now you're shilling for the dealership because they gave you a deal, I get it, now you're working for them. They're probably paying you commissions on the cars. I'm not getting anything. Uh, you know what I'm getting? I'm getting content. So content makes me money. So if Max is willing to let me continually film his cars, which I'm gonna film some more, as long as he's letting me do it, I'm gonna do it, then that's a win-win. He gets me to advertise their cars, and some of you get to see some cars maybe at better prices than they are at anywhere else. I get to film it, so I get that revenue, and you get to buy a car, hopefully for less money than that car would be somewhere else. So it's win-win-win. Now, I'm gonna be transparent. Max told me he would cover the, the hood pins for this thing, which I wanted the black hood pins on this thing. And I said, thanks, man. You don't even have to do that. Keep letting me use your cars for content because in the last, what, three videos, I'll just, straight up, remember I'm super transparent. I think I've made over six or seven hundred dollars on those videos. Go do the math on how those things are clicking. I, I think I passed five hundred dollars today, but with all the views that I haven't even counted yet, I'm probably at seven hundred dollars, which pays my first car payment on this car. So. I'm, a, I'm in it for the content, folks. That's what I'm in it for. And Max is a great guy. He did me right. He treated me fairly. He didn't lie, cheat, steal. Didn't play games with me. Didn't sit me in the dealership for four and a half hours and wail on me. The guy made a deal because I showed up serious, ready, willing, and able. Now, he did tell me this is a six-speed manual and a Challenger. It's not as desirable as a Charger. So maybe you have to wrestle a little harder on the Chargers. I don't know. But they have two Chargers there, and then they have a Challenger with an automatic in the F8 green and then they have a bunch of Hellcats. So call them up if you wanna buy a car. But I'm not telling you to walk in there and pay markup. I'm not telling you to walk in there and, and drop your pants and say, have your way with me. I'm not saying that. For those of you that think that's what I've been saying, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, go in there, mano a mano, and wrestle with Max. He's a great wrestler, and get your car. He wants to sell cars, you wanna buy a car, 
get your car at the best price you could possibly get it, shop around, compare his price with anyone else's, and if he beats it and you, you buy the car, you got a great salesman there. He did a good he did a good one by you, and he did good by me, and I appreciate that. And the dealership has been nothing but incredibly respectful since the day I left in this car. So with that, everybody, please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.